Ah, he must turn live, bust on Instagram. No one watching yet, surprise. Apparently 101 of my followers are active, but only one person is here. Hello, Tricky Trev. How are you doing? Here we go. They're all coming now. Edo. So, what should I talk about? I guess there's only one thing to talk about at the moment. <clears throat> Omonia. Omonia drew tonight, but yeah, second draw in a row. Yeah, someone's already jumped out. <laughs> I'm talking about Omonia and everyone's jumping out. I can help. So yeah, drew tonight against Abolon. A team that are top of the league. A team that have done quite well this season, given the circumstances. Um, and it was always going to be a difficult game. We saw them at the Ghazi B just the other day, really. We were quite unlucky to come away with nothing. But as I said in my Instagram story earlier, they didn't look like a team that was challenging for the title, did they? They didn't really. Because they set their stall out to get men behind the ball. Dingini was the only one up front. Tried to hit us on the counter-attack. And we pretty much did what they did to us. We had men behind the ball when they're getting men forward. And there was one point in the game, which I think, if I remember correctly, was in the last 10 minutes of the first half, they broke forward on the counter-attack, or what they thought was a counter-attack anyway, and we had four men back. They had three forward. And then by the time they got more people forward, Edo, we won the ball back. So in terms of our defensive play, just like against Ayel, absolutely sound. But I think their only concern it's probably going forward because just like at the Tsirion at the weekend, we didn't create much. And while it's a little bit of a concern because we've been scoring also fun recently, free-flowing football, counter-attacking football, just didn't happen. It didn't happen at the Tsirion at the weekend, didn't happen at the Tsirion tonight. But that's football. You can't win every single game. And if you'd have told me before the Aboil game, and I'll repeat myself, you'd have told me that we'd have gone eight games unbeaten, six wins, two draws. I'd have taken that easy. Still in contention for the title, three points off top place, and with the teams that we've got left to play, only we can throw it away. But now, Yodi, what do, I th do I think Aboil can come back? Come back from what? They're, they're, they're in the second, second stage, aren't they? They're at the bottom half of the table. I'm not worried about Aboil. Are you worried about Aboel? Who's worried about Aboel? I don't know anyone that's worried about Aboel. What, coming back to be title contenders? And yeah, maybe next season, if they don't get rid of this head coach and they replace him with another one because they go through like head coaches more than they change their uh, underwear, don't they? Dundies, bro, I think today, even though we didn't play top football, we showed we are the best team. I agree. Best team in the league. Because Ming Sakhnaz, had it not been for that Europa League campaign, We'd be top of the league. We'd be clear. With this squad that we've got, we'd be clear. And again, without Adam Lang tonight, without Babu Lise, who's been brilliant over recent weeks, still got a result against a team that's supposed to be title contenders. And I saw nothing tonight, nothing tonight about a Bollon that tells me that we should be worried about them. At the Gazi B, the other day, yeah. I, even I was saying, I'm surprised they didn't come away with a the win. They're a little bit unlucky. And we've seen why, why they're title contenders. This evening, I didn't see anything special. And I don't know if that's got to do with tiredness for them. Maybe their players were tired. I don't know whether it's because um, their head coach is, isn't as tactically great as people think he is because Olympia Gozzi did a good job. And he's gone to Abolon, who are top of the league. He's got to maintain that. I saw him in his press conference after the game at the Ghazi B and the, the press were battering him. They were killing him. And he was like, what do you want me to do? They've just lost against Omonia and they were probably the better team. And the press were killing him. I'm thinking, what the fuck is going on? But anyway, that's, that's a Cypriot press anyway. But Iodi, you think we can play? I agree, we can play better. And we should have played better tonight. Iodi, we were, we were good going forward. The left on, I didn't really see too much about us, in all fairness. Mm, I know the first half we had three, there were three fouls, if I could tell you. Between the 10th minute and the 17th minute, Johnny's was fouled once on the edge of the box and Loiza was fouled on the edge of the box and not one decision was given in our way. But then when they went up the other end, right on half time, same sort of thing, they get the free kick. And the referee was perfectly positioned for both of them. But again, we talk about super referees all the time. 
We know that there's an agenda. We know they've got something against us. We know Gop has got something against us. But unfortunately for them, they can't make it as more obvious because there's VAR. So Edo, what can you do? First half, I think we, we did well. Defended in a 4-3-3. I noticed Johnny's was playing as a central striker in that, in that defensive lineup, which was quite interesting because I've never seen him play in such a central role. Uh, Ernest was out wide on the right uh, and Thiago was out, left, uh, out wide on the left. But then moving forward as the game progressed, especially the back end of the first half, we moved to a 4-4-2, which again, I was quite surprised to see because Thiago isn't really a wide man. He isn't a wide man. And um, as fantastic a talent Loizu is, he can't constantly play wide, wide right. He can't constantly do it. He needs to play that number 10 role, but he'll adapt as time goes on. Um, we saw Boltiak come off the bench, which was fantastic, fantastic because he's been missing. Um, and I think, while well, I understand that fans are getting frustrated that he's not playing or not starting games, I can see why he's not starting. He's, he came back from a pretty bad injury. Um, you know, it, it'll take time for him to get used to, to the system. But at the same time, if we get in the playoffs, which is likely, we're going to need our players. We're going to need these players to be uh, fresh. So, you know, playing him every now and again until then, I don't see that being a problem. Sure, as a player, he's going to get frustrated because he wants to play every week. But this is football. And like I've been saying for the past week or so, week and a half, you can't change a winning lineup or a winning system just to accommodate players who aren't happy. Now, speaking of players that aren't happy, I don't know if Mavrias is happy to be sat on the bungo. I don't know. Because his contract is up. I believe he can talk to other teams now. And for him not to be playing tells me that he's not going to be here in the summer. Um, and the reason why I say this is because even when Shehu might not be playing. Who's going to play at right back? Hubachan. And he isn't anything like Mavrias. We saw last season Mavrias and Boltiak had a fantastic relationship on that right hand side. Fantastic relationship. But we're not seeing that this season. So I don't know whether there's a dispute over Mavrias' contract, why he's not playing. I don't know whether it's because maybe, I don't know, that, that mistake that he made against Olympia Goz in the, in the league game when we lost 2 1 has cost him his place. There could be several reasons why he's not playing. I'm disappointed that he's not playing because he's a fantastic defender. I think he's great going forward. And if Lesiax is going forward on that left-hand side, best believe if you've got Mavrias on the other side, defenders are going to be shitting themselves. But he's not playing. And I trust the manager and I believe in the manager. So I accept it. What about Loiza's penalty? Well, if that, if that foul was made outside the penalty area, it would have been a foul, right? The referee would have given a free kick. So why is that not a penalty? Why is that not gone to VAR? Because I know VAR was working. I thought they showed them on the TV before the game. So-and-so was in the VAR room. So why was I not given? But again, I, I go back to referees in Cyprus. And it's quite interesting I talk about referees in Cyprus because I just got off the, the podcast with Mike Pieri from Omonia Youth in London. And we were just talking about Anorthosi against, you know, us against Anorthosi away when Lang conceded a penalty, which was never a penalty. But they didn't have VAR at the time. VAR was only brought in a few weeks later. But if VAR was working, would they have given it? Probably. It's the God, isn't it? So, what can you do? But as for today's game, again, I don't have any problem with the way that we played. Like I said, the only little thing that frustrated me a bit was probably we didn't create enough chances. But again, just like Abolon did at the Ghazibi, they got men behind the ball, they made it difficult for us to break them down. We didn't have that play in the, in the, hot, the number 10 role to create as much as we'd like. I know Johnny's played there a little bit, but again, he's, he gets isolated. And when he gets doubled up, it's difficult for him to, to do what he does best. Um, but I think the system was good. Okay, Duris had a half chance in the second half, but again, he, I think it was unlucky. The, the, deflec the deflection sh slowed the ball down. Um, so it went straight to the goalkeeper's hands. Fabiano didn't have much to do. I, I remember he ha him having to make one save, a shot from outside the box, but this is it. Against Ayel, again, all they were doing was shooting from outside the box. And that shot that ended up in Maez's path for the equaliser, that was outside the box as well. So we're limiting teams as to what they can do inside the box. And we're saying to them outside the box, shoot. Because if you're going to shoot from 25, 30 yards, it's going to take something special to beat that keeper of ours. So, head on. Team is doing well with three points away without any derbies left. Bravo, Yanno. Bravo. That's, that's exactly what I was saying at the beginning. No more derbies left. 
No more team, no more Ayer, no more Ayek, no more Godes, no more Bafo, no more. No more Bollon. The rest of the teams, Salamis, Olympiagos, Ethnicos, Emiz, these are teams we should be beating, man. So it's up to us, Dora. Only we can throw the title away. So if at the end of the season we don't win the title, we th- we, it's our fault. It's our players' fault. It's the manager's fault. It's everyone's fault. Because these are games we should be winning. But at the same time, I'm not going to go into this one complacent. We're not going to go into this one complacent. The We've seen this season, Salamis beat us. Olympia Goz beat us. We struggled against Paralimni. We've struggled against a lot of teams this season. Okay, I understand we've had injuries, suspensions, Europa League. That's Kadalava. But that excuse is out the window, Dora. We can't use that. So when we play Salamis at home, we beat them. When we play Paralimni away, we beat them. It's that simple. And it's got to be done. There's no more excuses. No more excuses. Unless the referees decide to do Mian Malagi and Mian Chofta in every game, which is likely. Then there you go. If they rescored, things will be better, but we're okay. Yanni, do you really think he should have scored? The reason why I ask is that I think it was a very difficult opportunity for him. The ball didn't fall right. And I know you're going to say to me, hey, you're sticking up for him because you've been doing it all season. But I don't think any other striker would have really scored that one. Now, on the flip side, as a centre forward, he should have expected that ball because that's his job. He should have expected that ball to come in. At the same time, the defender was a bit too close. Could he have left it? Because I think there was someone behind him at the time. Could he have left it for Johnny's? Was it Johnny's that was behind him? I can't remember. It might have been Johnny's or Asante. I can't remember. Could have left it. That's why communication is important. If the ball comes in the box and Doris is about to get it, but he knows there's a man behind him, the man behind him says to him, leave it, turn his body, and there you go. But these things happen. It's ifs and buts. If, if Gomez had scored the penalty against Paralimni, we wouldn't be talking about that. If Doris had scored against Doxa, we wouldn't be talking about that. If he scored his chance against Salamis, the one-on-one when it was 1-0 to them, we wouldn't be talking about Duris and all these things. So, Edo. We got Abuel last game, huh? Hmm. How do you lot think Abuel are doing at the moment? A win and a draw tonight. A draw tonight against Ayek is a good result. It's a good result. And they had 10 men as well, didn't they? They had 10 men. So they look like they're turning a bit of a corner. Like I said, we know what Abuel are like. They'll lose one game, they'll win one, they'll draw one, then they'll lose and they'll lose and they'll lose. Edo, manager gone. Next manager. I wonder which other British manager they're going to bring in next time that's 67 years old. Neil Warnock, you want to bring him in? Do whatever they want. Oh, they want to get Mike Walker back. They'll get Mike Walker back if they want. He's not doing anything. He's not even doing any television work. So, Edo. So, what do you guys think of today's performance overall? Bemel. I think um, Shehu did well right back. He didn't get found out like he did against Abolon in the last game against them. I think Hubachan and, and Lufna were fantastic. Lesiak had a quiet game, but that was to be expected. Jordi Gomez is fantastic, isn't he? What a Bechtara. Honestly, what a player. And this is the thing about Jordi. If, if he was maybe two, three years younger, he'd be playing in that number 10 role. But he's, don't get me wrong, he's good in the middle of the park. Him and Gusulos were fantastic. Again, Gusulos unlucky not to get a goal. In fact, they had two opportunities. So, yeah, it's, it's looking promising. In the future, especially, with Loizu, with Joniz, they had a good game. And Daxi, Ernest Asante was kicked about again. Didn't really get many. Yeah, Roy Hodgson. Edo Yano. Roy Hodgson. When he leaves Crystal Palace, he'll go to Upoil. But to be honest, Roy Hodgson actually wins games, doesn't he? That's the difference between him and Mick McCarthy. He wins games. So, there you go. Bolte should start. Nick, do you know what, right? I think after tonight, I think he will start. I think after tonight's game, I think he will start. And the question is, where should he play? And the reason why I ask, is, ask this is because when he's been playing right wing, if he hasn't got a full back behind him, a right back behind him to overlap, he isn't as effective. Because what you'll notice last season... When Eric was getting the ball, especially out wide on the flank, Mavrias was always overlapping and Eric was cutting inside. So he'd always ping the ball in with his left foot. But because we don't have that right wing back or that right full back that can get forward, because like I said, Shehu's done well, but that's not his natural position. He's a central midfielder. So I think if we get a right back that can get forward, that can overlap, that can support the right winger, we'll see the best out of Eric. But then again, 
can Eric play in the number 10 role? We saw against Garmiodis at the beginning of the season, he played in that, that system against Buffalo, he played as a number 10. But the difference is, because he plays in that area of the pitch, he's going to get doubled up, he's going to be isolated, he's not going to be able to break the lines, and people are going to be kicking him. That's what they're doing. What's his hand on? All over the fucking pitch. So, I think if Eric's going to play that number 10 role, then we're going to need to see more from the striker. Now, if Shepovic starts with Boltek in behind him, then we've got a goal vendor. Then we've got a, then we've got a situation which I'm going to like here. So maybe that's maybe that's what um, Henning wants to do. I think Berg could sub Johnny's earlier and give both Boateng, Boateng, which Boateng there? What are you smoking, Boateng? You mean Boltek, don't you? Boltek, yeah. Johnny's looked a little bit tired, didn't he? He looked a little bit tired last 20 minutes. Um, uh, Nails, man. You can't expect him to play 90 minutes every single game. You, know, you don't want to burn him out either. But I think he's been fantastic this season, man. I think he's been brilliant. Johnny's you know, our player of the season, I think. Him and Gusolos, they've been brilliant this season. <laughs> he said, Moni are not buying this Botek. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I was thinking. Who, what Boateng? Have we signed Jerome Boateng? I didn't even know about this. Can you imagine Boateng out on Monia? Can you imagine Boateng out on Then again, we've got our own Messi. So, Loise will be nutmegging him all the time, isn't it? Be popping the balls over his head. Beautiful. And when do you think Shepovic will make his debut? Next game. I think he'll play the next game. Um, I think tonight we saw Asante do okay as a centre-forward. But that's not his game. He's not, he's not an out-and-out striker. He's not strong enough to hold the ball up. You know, he's not... He hasn't got that positional sense to drop deep, hold the ball up and lay it off to, to the wide man or to someone else. That's not Ernest's game. He plays off the defender's shoulder. He's got the pace. We've seen him on numerous occasions this season, especially playing in behind the central defender and the fullback. Put the ball through there. They're never going to beat him. I joke that he's the fastest player on the planet, but I'm actually dead serious. <laughs> I'm actually dead serious about it. He's rapid. No one catches him. In a foot race, you're never going to catch him. Never going to catch him. He's that quick. So, we saw against Garmiodisa, against Anortasi, uh, against numerous teams this season. One-on-one, 1v1, one -on -one, one -one, you're not catching him. It's that simple. You could, you know, he could give a defender a five-yard head start and he'll still catch him. Uh, am I associated with Omonia? No, I wish I was, Joshua. I wish I was. It's a fantastic football club. Um, I know a couple of the players. I'm not going to lie to you. But associated with them, working for them, no. I'm in England. What am I going to do here? What can I do with Omonia over here anyway? Even Zoom won't fucking help me when it comes to Omonia, honestly. Pedro. Who else? Is the Bart man still here? Is the Bart man still here? Is he still watching? If you're still watching, say something, man. I want to see how your coaching path is going. Tell me. I'm interested. It's been a while since you last spoke anyway. Edo, so next game. Bemo, what do you think? Three points, Bale? Go to the top of the league again? Bemo. Because at this moment in time, I can't see anyone else in the league better than us at this moment in time. And that's even despite two draws. I I've got no worries about this season. And this isn't me being complacent. I just think we're just that good. You know? When, when Lang is out, Hubichan will come in. If Shehu gets injured, Hubichan can go in at right back. Oh, we've got... Eh. Right, we've got a prediction here. Omonia for Akhna nil. Akhna are a good team. Forget their league position, they're a good team. They're a good team. Ilya's a very good striker, isn't he? Very good striker, I like him. like him a lot. 24 years old. He'll come to England one day. I'm telling you, he'll come to England. Baba Yoriu, good attacking midfielder. Was he? He's 23 years old as well. They've got good players, good players. So we need to we need to be careful. We beat them 2 1 earlier on in the season. De Ries scored then, didn't he? Eto. So yeah, man, it's um it's uh it's an exciting time, isn't it? It's an exciting time. So yeah, Ethnic Oz round the corner. Hopefully we'll get that win and then uh, put us at the top of the table. We shouldn't un we, you're right, Petro, we shouldn't underestimate them. I think they're a decent team. And um look, in England we say the table doesn't lie. And they are where they are because their results haven't been great. But if I remember correctly, didn't they wallop Anortosi, the goddess, 5-1, back in the last season? They did, didn't they? 
And they have been cutting teams apart. They've been unlucky in a lot of games this season. They haven't been playing well, but they've also not had the luck. So we can't expect them to come to the Ghazi B and for them to roll over. They're fighting for survival. And it's not going to be easy, one bit. But at the same time, I, I can't question this team's ability at all at the moment. You know, even if Vitor Gomez comes in, I know he didn't have a good game against Abolon and people were telling me, hey, he shouldn't play. He shouldn't play. He doesn't do enough. Well, teams like Abolon that are physical, Vitor's good to have because he likes to get stuck in, you know. But then again, as I said before, I'd love to see Shehu in the middle of the park because he's so comfortable on the ball in the middle of the park. We saw him against Granada in the Europa League, you know. He was so strong very tactically aware of, of his surroundings. Um, and with you know, Jordi Gomez or even Gusulos, when we're playing against teams that perhaps want to hit us on the character, it's good to have those two players there because then it allows the full-backs to get forward. So, Edo, Embiraz. Tottenham just drew against Fulham. Eh, Edo, what can I tell you? What can I tell you about Tottenham? You know, at the beginning of the season, I thought, eh, Jose Mourinho is going to come in. He's going to turn them around, at least make them fight for the title I'm not saying title contenders but at least be in and around and they had a bit of a bad patch they lost to Liverpool uh, they beat Leeds the other week um, but Fulham are a good team as well Mixer Knaz, man. They, I know they're fighting for, for survival but it's a dangerous game and this is what I'm saying about Ethnic Oz you can't take a, a relegation candidate uh, lightly because they're fighting for the survival they're fighting for their lives they're fighting for their jobs and especially with Covid Dora it's, it's very difficult. When a team gets relegated, they lose money. I mean, I don't know what the, the prize money is in Cyprus or the, the money for the TV rights. But, and it's not going to be anything like the Premier League. Nothing like the Premier League. But I'm sure that dropping out of the, the first division and going to the second division, they lose out on, on a, a bit of money. So the teams that are down at the bottom, fine for the last. Look at Garmi Odisa. They've been giving teams a, a, you know, a game this season. They came to the Ghazi B. They just about came away with a 1-0 loss. Didn't they beat the God, um, Aboel? And I swear they beat the Goddess as well, didn't they? So, Edo, fight for their lives. What's my opinion on Duris so far this season? Look, I'm a fan of Duris, okay? And I know people say, my idea, he's shit. And I go back to what I've been saying <clears throat> for a while now. He's been, jo he's joined the club at probably the most unfortunate time. And by that, I mean, when Derbyshire left, we've lost out on 12, 14, 15 goals a season. Duris isn't this prolific striker. He isn't the guy that's going to get you 15, 20 goals a season. So when you come in a club, when their main striker, the, the big gun, the, you know, the gunman leaves and they bring in a striker, immediately people are thinking, oh, he's his replacement. He's the guy to replace him. Doris wasn't brought in to replace Matt Derbyshire. Doris was brought in to add an extra uh, dimension to our play. So be it a striker that's holding the ball up, be it a striker that's making movements off the ball. Something that Leon Knight, former Chelsea player, Brighton player, has always said, especially to me, it's not what a striker does when he's scoring, it's also when he's not scoring. What does he do? And I'll go back to numerous games that I've seen Doris have a hand in, in certain goals, like Ael. Um... Is Ayek, sorry, against Ayek. His presence alone put off the goalkeeper, which then led to uh, Johnny's goals, uh, got, uh, his goal on, on the stroke of half time. I think he's been unlucky. Um, he doesn't score enough goals, granted, but I'm sure he'll be the first one to admit that he doesn't score enough. But you can't say that he doesn't work hard. You can't say that he doesn't put in an effort. You can't say that he's not a team player. And you can't say that, you know, he's been a terrible signing. Didn't spend any money on him. So. It's win-win, isn't it? Um, now, at the same time, he should be scoring more goals, as I said. Um, and there's chances that he's missed this season, which any one of us would have scored. My AI would have scored, and she's been dead five years. <laughs> you know? But at the same time, this, these things happen. And when you join Omonia, and I know people that are watching who aren't Omonia fans have been supporting different clubs throughout the world. You're probably thinking, ah, fucking who the fuck are Omonia? Omonia are one of the biggest teams, if not the biggest team in Cyprus. And when you join a club like that, the level of expectancy changes. Now, if you're sitting on the substitute bench for Anorthosi, you're not expected to score 15 goals a season. 
when you're playing for Gabiodisa or Salamis, you're not expected to score five league goals a season or ten league goals a season. But when you join Omonia, as the guy that who many believe replaced Matt Derbyshire, you're expected to score 15 goals. 15 goals minimum. So when he's missing chances, people are going to get on his back. And again, as I said before, it's normal to feel, feel a certain way about a player because they're not scoring enough goals or creating enough opportunities. But in all fairness, you tell me a player this season that hasn't gone through a bad patch. Ernest went through a bad patch at the beginning of the season. He turned it round. Eric went through a bad patch, didn't he? A lot of players have gone through a bad patch. Okay, there, there are some ex ex um, exceptions. Gusulos has been great all season. Fabiano has been great. Lufthansa has been great. Johnny's has been great. Um, but players have bad games. And th these things happen. For all we know, for all we know, in the playoffs, he might score in every game. He might score a winning goal. Hey, he might even score a goal that wins us the, the cup. Dogibelu. So you just never know in football. All it takes is for one stroke of luck and your fortunes change. Now, this might be a really bad example to give, but I'm just going to use it anyway. Gareth Bale. Edo, people are going to be like, oh, Gareth Bale. Gareth Bale was this close to being sold to Birmingham City when he was at Spurs. Harry Redknapp didn't trust him. And no Helen. But what happened? Something happened. Something changed. Something changed, Bedia. He ended up at Real Madrid. Scored two goals in the Champions League final. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen to, to Duris. I'm not saying that's going to happen. But what my point is, anything can happen in a player's career. It's a short playing career. Players get injuries. Um, they go from exceptional talents to promising talents to, fuck, that's it. Career done. One injury. So just as they can catapult themselves up to the highest level and score goals at the highest level and get all the adulation, they can go down the toilet. Off the field, they, they might have problems. They might not be, ha be able to handle the pressure. And this is what I'm talking about, pressure. The weight of the shirt, because Omonia is the biggest club in the league. So when you come from a, a substitute at an office to play at Omonia, immediately everything changes. You're not the guy that sits on the bungo and comes on every 10, 15, you know, for the last 10, 15 minutes of a game. No, you're at Omonia. So you have to produce week in, week out. It can be a bad thing. But at the same time, he could be a good guy. It could be a good thing. Because at the same time, you know what's, what, what is expected of you. You know what's expected. And you need to raise your game. You've got people criticising you left, right and centre. Mental strength. Do you have the balls, the achidia, to, pr to produce week in, week out? And don't forget, Doris won us the penalty at Legia Warsaw, didn't he? Edo. Social media guy in Omonia. La Losu, the best, another level. Dandy, thank you, man. Thank you. I'm actually blushing. You can't see it, but I'm actually blushing. No, I listen. I don't. I don't do it because I want to be the guy at Omonia's um, social media. My Greek is shit. Prodabola is shit. So I, I don't know how I'd survive in, in that kind of job. But um, I, I do this because I love it. It's fun. And yeah, I've had death threats. I've had people cussing me, making memes, and what kind of shit. But that, that's social media, man. Social media, if, if, you're, if you're on social media, then you've got to expect to be criticised. And while it not be right, that's just how it goes. Because when you're behind the screen, the other person on the other end can't hit you. And then, when you're on the other side of a mobile phone tapping away, cussing someone, saying your mum, your daughter, your this, your that, the other person that's receiving the messages can't give you a batakia, can they? Funny, when I went to Cyprus in October, I was walking around Larnaca, right? I bet there were people out there that probably recognised me. I'm not saying that I'm famous or anything, but there might be one or two people that recognised me on Mackenzie Beach, or when I went to Limassol, or when I went to the mall in Nicosia, where there's loads of aboilistes. I'm sure someone would recognise me. But they didn't say nothing. But this is what I'm saying. When you're behind the screen, it's all good getting brave and saying this and that. La estera, when someone's face to face, you're going what are you going to do? Eto. So I don't, I don't give a shit. I do ignore him, Pedro. I do. But to be fair, there have been a lot of Abu fans that have been following me and they've been messaging me saying, hey, you're funny. You're cussing our team, but you're funny. Um, and I've had good conversations with them. So it's not everyone. It's not everyone. It's, it's very rare that I'll get someone messaging me 
all sorts of bellas. Like when I when I prank called up OL, <laughs> when I prank called their offices, I had a couple of them messaging me. Uh, one of them recommended a, a psychiatrist, which was quite interesting because next time I go to Cyprus and I feel like shit, feel depressed, or my anxiety flares up again, I'll just give him a call. I said, your friend, that this Omonia, this uh, Upper Well fan account, says that you're a really good psychiatrist, so I'll, I'll come to you. Do you know what I mean? So, fuck him. Sick him, man. Um, fuck it off. Right, let's see. Ignore them. Respect. Hey, Joshua. This guy, man. I, I, you know what? I love the interaction. I love the interaction, man. And I know I've been going on for quite a bit, Dora. But, um, yeah, I appreciate everyone. And I don't say this enough. Um, I appreciate everyone that DMs me. I appreciate everyone that PMs me or sends me any kind of messages or even just interacts or likes my pictures or whatever kind of stuff because I do it because it's fun and you guys find it fun. And when it stops becoming fun for you guys and me, then I'm going to stop doing it. But right now, I fucking enjoy it. It's a laugh, you know? And um, I didn't think the Kipre would understand my sense of humor, but Edo, bomba. Mm. This is a Disney cup, by the way. Edo, I used to work for Disney. In their social media team, but they're cunts, so I'm not gonna go into it. Actually, I better not say that just in case someone from CZ is still watching me. Edo. But yeah, I made some notes about today's game, but I'm not gonna talk about that now. I think I'm gonna wrap it up in a minute because I'm just waffling, Dora, and you like getting bored. Um, when am I coming back to Cyprus? Oh, good question. Um, I was hoping to come end of February. Uh, because it's it will be half term for the scholia because my daughter's six and she wants to go back to Cyprus a lot. I don't know what's going on with this COVID situation and with Brexit or do I need to get a new day of Adirio? I don't know. But then again, if and when I do come back to Cyprus, I'm going to get my Cypriot passport. Fuck it. And then, uh, whether I see Omonia at the end of the season, champions. Champions. I had one... Uh, a L fan messaged me at the beginning of the season. Hey, it's us doing COVID champions. COVID, your mum, COVID. Your mum's got COVID. No, I can't say that in Grima. It's not nice. It really isn't anything to joke about, to be honest. It really isn't. There are millions of deaths as a result of this fucking virus, man. And it's, um, it's not a joke. People take it as a joke. I've seen people on social media putting up with these tweets and that kind of stuff saying, oh, it's, it's, it's a conspiracy. It's because the, the government want you to stay at home. The government don't want people to stay at home. They want people to go out and work. They have, these companies are hemorrhaging money furlough, furloughing people. They don't want people to stay at home. Why? Because they're going to put 5G masks. They're going to do it anyway. They're going to put 5G masks anyway. If they, They're not going to do it just when you're fucking in your house. They'll do it when you're asleep. They'll do it during the day. And who's got them? They're sitting there worrying about fucking 5G masks. Bellares, man. Oh, they want us to stay at home. Why? Why? They, they don't, don't want us to go to stay at home. Ignore these fucking idiots, man. Honestly. There were six here today. Yeah, six more deaths in Cyprus. And people are going to say, oh, six more deaths is nothing. But Cyprus is a small island, man. It's a small, small island. There's a million people on the island, if that. So six deaths today might be 20 tomorrow. Might be 14 the day after. And then the ratio goes up. And the, the percentage... Of, of uh, deaths increases. It ain't funny. So, Edo, what can you do? Anyway, Gobelia, um, I'm rambling on. Um, they want Simmasia. Yeah, that's right. They want Simmasia. They want attention because they've got nothing else going on with their lives. You know, sad to say, but th this is how it is. These conspiracy theorists, unbelievable. And you've got these fucking vloggers in London that go to, to protest. Oh, we want our freedom back. You've got your freedom. You have even more freedom when you listen to the rules and you stay at home. Stay the fuck at home. Unless you need to go out to buy shopping or look after someone that's vulnerable. Stay the fuck at home. What, what, makes, what makes me laugh is that there are people all over the world, but especially in the UK, who get money from the government when they don't have jobs. Um, because they don't have jobs or whatever reason. Benefits, as they call them. And then you've got people, the same people complaining that they're not allowed outside their house. Look, buddy, you've been sitting at home getting paid. So sit on your ass for God knows how long. Jedora, you're complaining that you can't go to your house. You can go walk your dog. Go to the park, get some exercise. Go shopping. But don't go fucking raving, going to, trying to go nightclubs 
and breaking into churches and using them as nightclubs. This this is turned into a, a COVID podcast, or hasn't it? It's not no choftes. Actually, no. This is no choftes. I don't want no choftes from people talking about conspiracies. Bellares. You're watching Boca Juniors with Santos for the Libertadores semi final. Ah, yeah. Because isn't isn't Palmeiras? Aren't they in the Aren't they in the semi final as well? And River Plate. So Palmeiras and River Plate are playing. Don't I know? Yeah, Omonia can beat them. Hmm. Uh, well, listen, anything can happen in football. I don't think the South American league is as well. The, the, the Libertadores or the that that region isn't as strong as what it used to be. That's because all the best players end up in Europe, don't they? Best player in your opinion at Omonia? I can't answer that question there. That's not fair. It's not fair. Um, uh, man, that's not fair. I can't be answering that question. Because I keep getting asked that question. I, I, I can't answer it because it's not fair. Because so many players have been good so far this season. Especially the past few weeks. On form, probably, probably Ernest Asante. Because he's, he's scored the most goals in the past few weeks. But I can't, I can't call out one player. Because every player is important. If Fabiano is injured or missing, we suffer. If Lufner's out, we suffer. If Lang's out, we suffer one way or the other. If Jordi Gomez is out, it, it, it adds up. It's a team game, and that's what makes this team so special. Like I've been saying for God, God knows how long. At the beginning of the season, I was saying this team is fucking special. Because every player plays for each other. It's a team game. And when they work hard, and when they play the tactics that Henning wants, there's no team better in the league. It's that simple. Palmeiras eliminated River. Ooh. Ooh, and River, River got to... Uh, didn't they beat Boca a couple of seasons ago in the final? Anything more? It was in... It was in uh, it was in uh, Madrid the second leg because I had the Kafkaes in, in Argentina. Anyway, Gobelia, I've been going on for too, too long. Um, hope you enjoyed this Instagram live. I'm going to put this on YouTube. And um, yeah, if you've got any more questions, put it in the comments section on, on YouTube and I'll answer them best I can. So yeah, until next time, Gobelia, I'm going to press that X, Dora. No chop this.